Okay, so for this problem, they are asking us to calculate the torque, the magnitude and direction about the origin due to the force acting on this. So for part A, here's what we're going to do. Of course, you want to draw your little diagram. So this dot is the origin. Here's my door. And we apply a force in a positive J in the upwards direction. And it tells us that this force is equal to 10 meters. Excuse me, 10 newtons. And then it also tells us that the length of this rod is 4 meters. So we use this information to figure out how much torque we have. So we know that the formula for torque is equal to our force times our radius times sine of the angle between those. So next, our force, our magnitude of our force so we can actually get rid of that vector notation. It's just the magnitude. So 10 newtons times our radius, four meters. And sine of the angle between them. There's a 90 degree angle between. They are perpendicular. So sine of 90 degrees. Put this in the calculator. 10 times 4 is 40 times 1. That's just 1 on the unit circle. So that just doesn't matter. So it's just this. So then we have 10 Newton meters. Therefore, our torque is equal to 40 Newton meters. Next, if we want to calculate the direction, we just look at the angle at which we applied the force. So we hit the door in the up direction. So the door, of course, is gonna swing open in a counterclockwise direction. It wouldn't make any sense for you to hit the door and it would come back at you. That makes no sense according to Newton's third law. So we apply a force and then it goes in a counterclockwise direction and spins about the hinges of the door. Counterclockwise, means the positive direction. We know this from trig. So here's zero degrees, here's positive 90. Here's zero, here's negative 90 or 270. So counterclockwise is positive. And for this example, we are going to take the positive direction to be out of the page. Okay, so we have our magnitude and we have our direction for part A. I'm going to erase the board and get to part B. Okay, so for part B, we are going to need vector knowledge. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the diagram. Here's the hinge and there's the actual door. And we apply a force at an angle of 120 degrees. This is the given information. Okay, so take this force vector. We know that it has a magnitude of 10 newtons. Okay, so next, we are going to take this vector. Vectors can move, so I'm just gonna write it over here just to show you what I'm about to do. So it's 10 newtons in magnitude. There is an X direction to this vector and there's a y direction to this vector. Let's call this fx. Let's just call this normal f. And then let's call this fy. f sub y. So we can break this vector 
this resultant into its components. We need to solve for our upwards force because we don't care about the direction, the horizontal direction, because let's say you have this door. If I push this door horizontally against the hinges or the door itself, go do it yourself. Go try to push the hinge on the door. It won't move. We only care about forces that hit straight towards the door. Perpendicular, they can come at an angle, doesn't matter. But if they're straight from the door, they're not going to move the door. So we care about these. And we have one of those, so we're going to break it up into its parts. Okay, so next, we're going to solve for this vector right here. So we know that this angle is 120. If we break it, this is 90. What's left over is 30 degrees. So I know that this is going to be 30 degrees. Inside of here is 30 because 90 plus the extra 30 equals 120. So this is 30. So now use trigonometry. 10 cosine of 30 degrees because cosine is adjacent. So now put this in the calculator and you should get a value of 8.66. And make sure you go to mode and make sure your calculator is in degrees. So now, now that we have 8.66, I'm going to redraw this door. Our point of force, our point of application was at the edge of this door right here, right there. We came at an angle, but now we only care about the force that's moving it up or down. And we calculated this force. Notice it's not at an angle. The first force was at an angle. This is not an angle because we calculated the upwards force, the upwards vector component. So now we calculated this to be 8.66 Newtons. So this is the radius, four meters. The angle between them is 90. So now we can calculate torque. So it's radius. times your vector, your force vector. Times sine of the angle between them. Four times 8.66 times one. Put that in the calculator and you should get a value of 34.64. Newton meters. So that is our torque for part B. But now we have to calculate the direction. So notice we hit the door upwards. It's going to spin in the counterclockwise direction. Since we hit it in a counterclockwise direction, we know counterclockwise is positive. And in terms of up or down into the page, if it is positive, it comes out the page. Part C. Okay, so for part C, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the hinge in the door again. And we apply that force at the end of the door, just like last time. at an angle of 30 degrees. Same issue, we need to solve for its components because we know that our X component doesn't affect the door. The only component that will move the door counterclockwise or clockwise is in the Y direction. So we need to solve for our force in the y direction. So if this is 30 degrees, then this is 60.
Okay, so we have a triangle. 60 degrees. F sub Y, F sub X. And our force, which we know to be a value of 10 newtons. So we know this is a right triangle because I made it into its component parts. So now we solve for F sub Y. It's going to be equal to 10 newtons multiplied by cosine of, of 60, yes. So we put this in the calculator and we should get a value of five newtons. I'm gonna go ahead and redraw that door. So basically what we're doing is we have a door and instead of just drawing the normal larger main force, I'm just, just gonna draw the Y component. So that's just gonna be an upward force of five Newtons. And we know that the door itself is four meters. That didn't change. And the angle between them is 90 degrees. So our torque is our radius, four meters times our force, five newtons times the angle between them, sine of 90 degrees. I hope you're getting the picture now. All we need to do is break it up into its component parts and then put in the calculator. So put this in the calculator and you should get a value of 20 newton meters. Once again, we hit it in the upwards direction. So of course the door is gonna spin in the clockwise direction. We know that the clockwise, excuse me, the counterclockwise direction. And we know that the counterclockwise direction is the positive direction. You can also write it like this. Anytime you go in the positive direction, your axis is coming out of the page. Use the right hand rule. Okay, I'm gonna get to part D. Okay, so for part D, go ahead and draw that diagram. Now, they tell us that we are coming with a force in the middle of the door at the two meter mark. So our radius is gonna be two meters and not four this time. So here's our force. We came halfway, total is four. Half of the door is two meters. So now we know that our radius is two. We need to find the downward force, the force in the Y direction. F sub Y, break the red vector up into its components. That's F sub X at the top, if you can't see it. All right, I'm just gonna write it down here. So you have your normal vector coming down, your red vector. F X, F Y. So we need to solve for that FY of being applied onto the door directly. So we know that our normal force, oops, not normal, our force, the red vector is 10. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the angle that they give us. And they tell us that this is 60 degrees right here. So if that's 60, and that angle inside right there is going to be 30. And that's this angle right here, 30. So we have a triangle. So if we want to find this, f of y is going to be 10 cosine of 30. Put this in the calculator and you should get a value of 
newtons all right so i'm gonna go ahead and redraw the picture we have a door four meters long but we have a force of 8.66 newtons coming down in the middle of that door So we know our radius is 2 and our vector is 8.66. So now, calculate our torque. The angle between them, of course, is 90. And this is in the negative direction. Keep that in mind. All of the previous examples were upwards. So this is going to be negative 8.66. You can think about it as the vector negative 8. 0.66 j you can think about it as that vector going down so matter of fact i'll just go ahead and put a negative there so we can calculate our torque two times negative 0.866 times sine of 90. put that in the calculator and you should get a value of negative 17.32 but the question asks for the magnitude. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the absolute value. It says the magnitude. So all of the other previous examples were positive. So we didn't have to worry about that. But they did ask for magnitude. So we only want the positive value. But the negative torque tells us a lot. It tells us, hey, you're going in the counter. Excuse me, you're going in the clockwise. Notice. Now we're going downwards. We're going in the negative direction. And negative is into the page. That's part D. Okay, so for part E, draw that diagram. We have a door and we have a force being applied directly on the hinge. What does that tell you? That should tell you, man, if you touch a door on the hinge, it's not going to move. So I can already see that the torque is going to be zero, but we can go through it. So force downwards, well, we can break it up into its parts. Notice that's all I'm doing through all of these problems, just breaking them into the parts. I don't care about f of x, excuse me, not f of x, f sub x, because it's not going to move the door at all. That doesn't matter. So we just calculate our f sub y. So if we have our normal vector, if that's 60, the inside is 30. I'm not going to even write this out because it doesn't matter. Fy is 10 cosine 30. Put that in the calculator. And you should get a value of 8.66. Newtons. Okay, so here's the door. You're applying a downward force. I just broke it into the F sub Y component. So downward force of 8.66. Now ask yourself, what is the radius? It's not 4. The radius is the distance from the origin to the point of contact of the force. And if the force is directly at the origin, then you didn't move. You don't have a distance. So your radius is zero. So put that into the torque formula. R times your force times, there is no angle between them because it's just at a point. Guys, your torque is going to be zero. Anytime you push on the, the hinge of the door, in any direction or 
when you push on the door itself, it's going to be zero. Yeah, guys, so for part E, I forgot to say that there was no direction. Because there is no magnitude, there can't be a direction. If you have a point, and I ask you, what direction is it pointing in? First of all, two people could argue it's undefined because it could be pointing this way, it could be pointing this way. There could be infinitely many. But my logic is, it's just a point. You can't point anywhere. It's It, it has no direction. Okay, so now for the last part, part F. We have the door. Same thing. We have a force being applied directly on the door. It's not going to move. Same reason. The radius is still 4, but the force being applied is in the same parallel direction. Angle between them is 180, so put it 4 times 10 times sine of 180. Super easy. This goes away. It's 0. 0 times anything is just 0. Your torque is zero again. And no direction. Same reason. In these kind of problems, you don't say no direction. You just say torque is zero. You're not moving. So that's how you do all of these door problems. There you go.